to Bitshit TV, my name is Fabrizio Party. Today's episode is about product support. Now, what do I mean by product support? We're going to be talking about you buy your airplane, what type of support are you going to get once you've bought the aircraft, and what kind of support's there when something goes wrong because airplanes do break down, how soon can they get you the spare part, and all that kind of good stuff. So, this is an important AIN have just published their, their annual report. So, we're going to be touching on the salient points. Of the report and i'll be sort of underlining a few factors and there's a surprise in there about this incredible japanese airplane which was discontinued in 1986 and you'll find out how that product support is doing today and it'll be a great surprise on that one you'll find out what airplane it is we'll show you some footage in that uh, in this video and uh, the amazing things that are happening with it with this airplane quite a surprise quite a surprise so if you haven't subscribed to budget tv i encourage you to subscribe to this channel and give us a thumbs up and comment below we love to hear from you your recommendations for future videos and also your comments on this particular video uh, I'd love to hear from you so subscribe click that like button and let's get straight into today's episode all about product support off we go So product support is really important. Um, you know, you've just bought your airplane or you're thinking of buying an airplane and uh, you know, it's, it's great. It's got great technology on it and whatever. But the question you need to ask yourself is what happens when this thing breaks down? Because if anybody's going to tell you, oh no, this airplane never breaks down. The dispatch reliability is 99%. I can guarantee you there will be a point where you'll get stuck. And when you do get stuck, and it may be in the middle of a really important business transaction where you have to go from A to B to close that deal and the plane suddenly goes tech. Um, so you want to know uh, what product support is in place on behalf of the manufacturer so that when this thing does go wrong or something does go wrong, how soon can the airplane get back into the air? Now, this survey was done and, you know, uh, there's quite a few people that responded to the survey, 885 people. Um, the survey includes 2,871 aircraft, over 137 different models. So it's quite a broad array of aircraft. This survey is done every year. Uh, this year we saw Dassault one um, and uh, what Dassault had done over the years, they weren't very good with their customer service and everything. They decided to figure out what was going wrong and they discovered they didn't have enough you know, facilities around the world so they started to invest um, they just um, uh, built a 10,000 square foot facility over the west coast um, in Reno Nevada they also got a facility in Dubai a one in Kuala Lumpur um, they've also improved their Falcon care uh, maintenance system as well uh, offering other levels um, so these are all the improvements that the so have done and that's uh, you know people or customers have seen uh, you know the money going in there and the benefits of that uh, from them so um, when the Falcons have got you know had a problem uh, does so have been more on the on the ball uh, compared to the past. So that's a great thumbs up there for the guys at Dassault Parking Services for doing this. Uh, another company which flags up here to me is uh, Gulfstream. Uh, Gulfstream, uh, as far as aircraft reliability, score 9.3. Um, that's really, really interesting. Uh, Gulfstream have, have made a number of investments. Uh, they built a facility over at Farnborough in the UK, another facility at Palm Beach in Florida. Um, they're also building a, a new 163,000 square foot facility at Alliance Airport in Fort Worth. Um, so they are expanding their service centers around the world, uh, just like the are doing. And the other thing they've done is they've got a, a very good e-commerce system now uh, where people can go on to buy spare parts and they're supporting the 3000 jets that are out there and they've got a great system to upgrade the older golf streams. And if you want to know more about that, you can click on the link above. Uh, to that video where I talk more about what Goldstream is doing for the older, uh, older, older aircraft data, which is important. Another interesting piece of data, which I kind of knew about, is Learjet scored low, 7.6. And uh, the problem with Learjet, as you know, as I, saw, as I said in my previous video, if you didn't see my interview I did with Erin uh, Lear, you can click on that link above. Um, one of the problems Learjet have had throughout the years is that that product support wasn't very good. So, you know, they'd sell you a Learjet. The Learjet's a great airplane. Uh, some really, really great airplanes and uh, 3,000 Learjets that are out there right now. But when they broke down, Learjet weren't really there for the existing customers. And that's probably why you know, Bombardier decided to pull the plug on the Learjet and end production at the end of this year. So they scored really low, which is not surprising. Uh, Pilatus are doing well. Uh, Pilatus have always done very well. Um, you know, these airplanes, the PC-12, the PC-24, built in Switzerland. And uh, they've opened other service centers throughout the U.S., 
because a lot of the Pilatus PC24s and PC12s are sold uh, to, to the US market. So they're improving on something that was already very good. Uh, so thumbs up there to the guys over at Pilatus. Um, and then uh, there's an interesting one, uh, which I thought was, was really cool. It's the Mitsubishi MU2. Now, the interesting thing about the Mitsubishi MU2, as you can see, it's a turbo prop, very, very noisy. If you've ever been at an airport um, and this thing lands, and you can you can hear this thing come on the apron because it's really, really, really noisy. Now, uh, it's a particular airplane. It was originally designed and built for the um, Japanese Air Force, and they stopped production in 1986. Now, that's a long time ago. That's the year I learned to fly in 1986 when I was 17. Now, you know how old I am. But, you know, so what Mitsubishi have done, they set up a company specifically focused on servicing the Mitsubishi MU2 airplanes that are out there. And they've done an absolutely cracking job at it. You can upgrade the avionics. There's all sorts of support there. And they scored, a, you know, a whopping 9.1 on that for an airplane that was you know, uh, ended production in 1986. So, you know, if you're thinking of buying a Mitsubishi MU2, uh, which is an airplane that's very much a pilot's airplane, the guys that have it absolutely love it. They love flying it. It's not an easy airplane to fly, uh, but you know, people love the challenge. It's fast, even though it's a turbo prop, it, it's quick. It gets into short airfields, it lands on grass. Um, and if you're thinking of buying an MU2, uh, you know, there is great product support there. And this is one of the things when you're buying an airplane that's been discontinued, it's no longer been built, what type of product support is out there? Uh, some of these manufacturers no longer exist, and, and that may be a bit more difficult uh, to you know support an airplane that where the manufacturer doesn't, uh, no longer exist, but you know companies have been set up to support these older aircraft. Um, and, uh, you know, and then there's companies like Gulfstream that, you know, discontinue some of their airplanes, but, you know, they've got a good support system for those older aircraft. So that's kind of uh, the picture here. So I encourage you to click on the link below. You can download the report and have a read yourself um, and find out what the other manufacturers are doing. I've just kind of given you a bit of a summary on the main points um, of this product support report that just came out. Uh, but, you know, when you are buying an aircraft, we've got to be really specific because this report, again, is a general report. We need to be specific on, you know, where are you located? Where are you mostly going to be flying the airplane into and out of? OK, and what type of aircraft are you going to be operating? And then we have to go hone in on that specific model and in that specific geographical area of the world. And then we need to look at what type of flying you're going to do. How many hours do you estimate you're going to be doing? Um, and, you know, the various aircraft that we're looking at, um, which ones are going to come up for maybe a sea check. If, if an airplane's, you're buying an airplane today that's going to come up for a sea check in a couple of years and you operate in a part of the world where there are no facilities that, um, that perform sea checks, you're going to have to fly, you know, quite a, maybe on the other side of the world to have a sea check done. Uh, you know, you need to cost all those things in and think about that as well. This airplane is going to do a sea check and I'm in, I don't know, Indonesia and I need to fly to Dallas for the sea check. Um, you know, that's a, that's a long flight and uh, the airplane may be down for a couple of months. So you need to plan that. Um, so if you're buying the airplane, you need to think about these things, about the product support. Um, and don't ask the manufacturer because the manufacturer is going to tell you, oh, we have the best product support in the world. Um, and they'll come up with some product support thing which backs that. Uh, what you need to do is you need to speak to somebody like me or, or, or just ask around people that actually have, have this aircraft or have operated this aircraft and find out realistically what, what's going on. We, how often does it break down? When it breaks down, what parts um, need, need substituting, uh, replacing, or how quick are the manufacturer you know, to send you the part and repair uh, the aircraft. I mean, there's some aircraft out there, technologically absolutely fantastic, but product support has been appalling. Um, and that's been, you know, the, the demise of these aircraft. So product support is a really, really important element. It's not just, oh, this looks really cool. This has got the latest and greatest technology. It burns less fuel than the competitors. But, you know, at the end of the day, you are buying a plane and you're going to operate an airplane to save you time. But if the airplane's broken and it's sitting in a hangar and you're waiting for a spare part, and it's been sitting there for three weeks, well, your time's gone out the window. So this is an important part of your aircraft acquisition process is finding out this information. And I suggest talking to an aviation advisor, hiring an aviation advisor that can talk you through the process, monitor stuff, and make sure that you get the right airplane for you, your team, your family, to, to fly you around the world safe, but efficiently. And um, when things go wrong, it gets fixed and it gets you back up in the air and gets you making money. It's really, really important thing. So if you haven't subscribed to Boostjet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And I'd love to hear your comments. What airplane are you currently 
operating. Uh, what problems have you had with product support? How has the manufacturer been? Let's get the chatter going. Let's get the real conversation going below this video. Let's find out you that watching this video operate a CJ3. How has Textron been doing? If you're flying a Phenom 300 or a Honda Jet or Goldstream G4 or a, a Global Express, how has the product support been? What experience have you had? Let's get that conversation going. I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure the rest of the fans here would love to hear what experiences you've had. And check this video out about Goldstream and the older Goldstreams and the type of support that Goldstream are giving to their customers. Very interesting video. And that's all from Fabrizio Poli on BizJet TV. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.